Back in January 2017, the late Martin McGuinness from Republican Party Sinn Féin stood down as Deputy First Minister of Northern Ireland. He wasn't on board with the DUP leader's handling of a renewable heating scheme scandal. The joint nature of their roles meant that when he quit, First Minister Arlene Foster lost her job too. This forced Northern Ireland's power-sharing executive to collapse. Power-sharing is a key part of governing in Northern Ireland. It ensures both Catholic and Protestant interests are represented. Anyway, back to the present. After the collapse, an election was called. The DUP and Sinn Féin were the two largest parties, but this time, Unionists no longer had an overall majority. The parties couldn't reach a deal to form a government, and talks have continued to fail since. Sinn Féin want proper legal status for Gaeilge or Irish under an Irish Language Act and for same-sex marriage to be allowed in Northern Ireland. The DUP don't. And neither side is showing signs of compromising. With no sitting assembly, civil servants have been running things. But without ministers in place, major policy, including reform of Northern Ireland's health service, cannot be implemented. No new laws can be passed and debates can't happen. Health and social services, education, policing and housing are among the devolved matters which the Assembly has full legislative power over. With considerably less work to do, all 90 members of the Legislative Assembly saw their salaries cut by 15% in November 2018, with a further cut this January. If the parties cannot agree on a deal to get them back into Stormont together, Northern Ireland will be governed by direct rule from Westminster. But with two years already passed and no direct rule yet, it's unclear when this would happen.